little bit of history. Uh, there was a chap called um, Ulysses. Ulysses went off to fight in the Trojan Wars. Uh, when he went off to fight in these Trojan Wars, he decided he had a young son called Telemachus. Now Telemachus, um, he wanted his son to be brought up properly, so he didn't want him to be out of line, so to learn certain things. And he had trusted a friend of his, who he trusted completely, to look after his son's well-being, to make sure that he mixed with the right people, that he didn't drink, uh, probably didn't smoke in those days because the tobacco wasn't found. Um, and that fella's name was Mentor. And that's where the word mentoring comes from, that old, those old ancient Greek times where the person was trusted to look after. So a coach would have many, as Les said, would have many hats. And one is a mentor. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Moreno Boxing. Um, I'm your host, Carlos Moreno, and today we have Kevin with us. Kevin, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kevin Fulthop. I'm one of the uh, training team with the British Boxing Board of Control. My day to job, uh, Royal Air Force Physical Training Instructor, and looking at the, the health, well-being uh, of boxers and uh, RAF personnel. Awesome. So um, today, I have, I'm on my first day uh, of my second and trainer's uh, pro license. And um, Kevin has been talking through a lot of the safety regulations and the first aid uh, techniques that are used for dealing with injuries in the ring, in a contest and in the gym as well. A lot of people say, oh, I, I just have to know the technique. I just have to be able to coach. Actually, I'm finding that in this course, it's w more about safeguarding the fighter, isn't it? Yeah, you, you've got, um, you, got, you have to look after the welfare of the fighter. When we say the welfare, it's having a, a, a very decent knowledge on how the body works, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the anatomy and physiology of the body, looking at the energy systems, how the body works, diet and nutrition, which is a huge part, looking at the, uh, the mental health and mental uh, awareness of the boxers so that they're, um, they know what they're doing, they know how to train, um, you know how to train them properly, looking at the various uh, principles of fitness, muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, the motor skills of the body, looking at uh, uh, balance, um, quickness, all the, those various areas. And the big one as well is attitude and desire. Uh, if your boxer doesn't have the attitude and doesn't have the desire, it doesn't matter how much of the other components of fitness he has or she has, then they're not going to make it. Kevin, as you know, in, in your uh, session, I had a lot of questions. Yes. And I had a lot to say. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very passionate on my channel about reinforcing and talking about the mental well-being mm -hmm. of fighters, yeah. the psychological side of the sport. One thing I always say is, I say a lot, of, when you're competing in boxing, from my experience, a lot of, and most fighters are going to be fit. They're pretty yeah. much all of them are going to be conditioned because that's what they train for. A lot of them are going to be technically gifted at a high mm -hmm. level. They're going to be very technical. But where I find it's more difficult sometimes is following through with strategy, having a strategic approach to your training, following the rules, regulation, being prepared and sort of having a long term vision in the sport and in yeah. the ring, in the fight. Yeah. And that's where I feel some fighters let themselves down a little bit. Uh, today you talked about a holistic approach, yeah. right? A holistic approach to the well-being of a yeah. fighter. Would you like to expand a little bit more on that? Well, quite simply, those who... Um fail to prepare, then they prepare to fail. Initially, it's not just looking at uh, the, the strength and the physical attributes, it's also the mental attributes. Uh, boxing needs to be mentally aware. One, you need to be aware that it's a dangerous sport. And if you're not physically fit, then you could, you could you know, be injured. Uh, so the fitness is very, very important, but the, the mental health and the mental awareness, uh, the attitude of desire to undertake what you're going to do, you need to be mentally strong, mentally fit, so that anything that is thrown at you, you cope with it. Uh, there's lots of anxieties that come into play. Um, we talked uh, with Carlos about different methods, and we can learn many, many methods of uh, learning how to mentally stabilize ourselves through other cultures, for example, Buddhism, um, yoga, lots of other ways of sort of relaxing. Some people may like to listen to music, other people might like to go to the cinema, other people might like to go out for a, a, a drink with friends. Mm -hmm. Different ways to relax. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a little spin on that because we did, I know we talked a lot about 
relaxing, but I want to do a little spin. So we have uh, methods of getting the fighter to relax or fighters have their way of relaxing. But talk to us about methods of getting in the zone. So if, like pre-fight, a fighter wants to get in the zone. Does it, is, it, is it similar? Is it the same? So some people, would it be a case of the fighter listens to softer music when he wants to relax and more hardcore music when he wants to fight? Yeah, yeah. Um, music we would call an ergogenic aid. Uh, you know yourself, if you go to um, a, a local leisure centre fitness class, a spin class, the music is set to start off very, very slow during the warm-up mm. and then you'll get uh, interval sessions. When you come into a certain interval session that is going to be of a high intensity, the music is faster, it's more invigorating, it gets you going, it's something that you might... Um, be used to and then as you move along then you then move into the cool down as you get into the cool down then it's more relaxing music mm -hmm. which will bring you down and you tend to relax more this is where you do your stretching and your your relaxation the fighters life how much of it do you think the the, the things that go on outside the ring affect the fighter in terms of their relationships friendships etc and um, what things can fighters do to sort of live a well-balanced life Moderation is one simple word, a word that my father always used to bring up. There's lots of, the only things you can't do in moderation is smoking and drugs. You stay completely away from mm -hmm. that. Alcohol, so long as you're sensible and you don't drink excessively, it's good to socialise and have a drink with friends. Uh, it's good to mix with other people. You shouldn't get yourself into a, a loneliness situation where it's just you. You should have some other interests outside of boxing that helps. It shouldn't be the be all and end all because one day it will be gone from your life unless you come into it as a, as a coach uh, like yourself, Carlos. So you need to be aware of these situations. And, and what is really important is to understand that it is a hard sport, uh, but you also need to look at the aspects that come into it. For example, if your diet is wrong, diet can affect mood. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So if you're eating the wrong types of foods, that can upset you. It can put an imbalance in your the, the mood that your body has, that your mind has, which can have an effect on your training, wanting to train. If you don't eat properly, you don't have the carbohydrates, uh, the energy, you don't have the proteins to rebuild, so then you're just on a, a, on a losing situation where you're just gonna drop. That's, that's incredible, because I feel like, through my career, I, I did 10 years of amateur boxing, mm. and uh, I had about 40 odd fights, right? Mm. Um, and even though I did it just at that level, I still felt the effects of the forces outside yeah. of uh, the sport in mm. my life um, and how they affected me in my mental state. And being so young, I started when I was 15, 16, mm. I didn't really have the understanding of the mm. capacity to deal with those things. So as a trainer, how important is your role in, because the train, the fighter, you can't see him 24 seven. No. The fighter comes yeah. into the, the gym, he trains, he mm. goes home. What things can a coach do to ensure that his fighter sort of stays on the right path? One thing you have to do is rely on the integrity of your boxer that when you put things ahead of them, they will carry them on. Uh, a little bit of history. Uh, there was a chap called um, Ulysses. Ulysses went off to fight in the Trojan Wars. Uh, when he went off to fight in these Trojan Wars, he decided he had a young son called Telemachus. Now Telemachus, um, he wanted his son to be brought up properly. So he didn't want him to be out of line so to learn certain things and he had trusted a friend of his who he trusted completely to look after his son's well-being to make sure that he mixed with the right people that he didn't drink uh, probably didn't smoke in those days because tobacco wasn't found um, and that fella's name was mentor and that's where the word mentoring mm. comes from that old those old ancient greek times where the person was trusted to look after so a coach would have many, as Les said, would have many hats, and one is a mentor, and that mentor will say, "Oh, you, why are you hanging around with that bunch? You know, they're trouble. They're they're no good for you. They're going to cause a lot of problems." And you have to be selfish to a certain point, self in such a way that if you if you're in a relationship, and you're a very very good boxer that can achieve very very high standards, when the girlfriend says to you, "You don't come up with me anymore. You don't do this." Well, maybe the girlfriend got to go because um, she's putting barriers between you and your sport. Mm. It is hard, but you've got to focus and, and look at what you want. Because when you're older, you might look back and think, that's it, I could have been a champion. In boxing, as we know, there are so many peaks and troughs. Okay? Mm. Uh, fighter's doing amazing. Everyone wants to be around him. There's money flowing everywhere. He's going to exclusive parties. He's getting sponsorship here and there and then he loses a fight mm. and then all of that is gone okay mm. and now 
he has to drag his feet back to the gym get training again the cameras are not coming anymore the titles are not there the, the people that were there for the ride are no longer there so and he has to pick himself up after basically falling down I mean how much of an impact is that gonna have on a someone's psyche and what can a fighter do what can a person do to build that resilience to be able to cope with that it can have a tremendous uh, an effect on them uh, the secret really is to be mentally strong to pick yourself up and get on with it and also have a good bunch of friends as um, we spoke of earlier my dad had a saying fair weather friends uh, they're there with you when the weather is good um, but when things are bad you te they tend to leave you we all have a circle of friends that we know are our best friends and they'll look after us and look out for us. So it's really to surround yourself with those type of people and try and know these fair the weather friends that you know they're only there um, for what uh, they can get from you. Um, you know, they're the ones we don't want around us. We want people we can trust, people we can work with. And really if a boxer is down, it's really trying to just, it's up to them. They really, it's down to them to pick themselves up, dust themselves up and get on with it. I suppose that's what being a fighter is all about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, the word fighter, what is a fighter? What is the definition of a fighter? It's someone against adversity that fights against anything. You could be fighting against illness, you could be fighting against um, anything, and the idea is to fight and overcome and win. Look, I've got a million questions, but I'm gonna have to leave it there for, for the guys, because okay. I know I've got another day tomorrow, so I wanna go home, chill, do some reading, study, edit this video, upload, but, it was a pleasure to have you, Kevin. Pleasure, Carlos. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow and learn more stuff. Guys, keep your guard up at all time and keep boxing on. Peace.